Oh, but it literally feels like a reverse of the bloody lorry. Oh. Okay, we're jumping straight in to Euro Truck Simulator, which just got Oculus Rift DK2 support, and um, I believe it's the first commercial a uh, fully fledged game that actually supports the DK2 properly and it's also the first simulator that supports the DK2 which is awesome because it lets you actually try it out properly. Now as you can see immediately with me not wearing it the, the tracking is absolutely incredible with the DK2. I've got the camera uh, on top of my computer screen which of course you can't see in this video the, the DK2 tracking camera which is too high and too far away but even then it seems to be fine with that so even though I'm misusing the equipment already uh, the DK2 is perfectly happy but the video uh, recording on screen is slightly delayed in the actual game you can kind of see it on the webcam recording down the bottom right hand corner that everything syncs up really fast and when you're when you're actually in it it's all really smooth it's pretty incredible how good the tracking is I mean obviously you're never going to move your head around like this unless you're sort of in an earthquake or sat on a washing machine uh, the tracking is superb you can see the infrared dots if I actually point the camera on there because the webcam doesn't filter out infrared. You can't see them in real life, you can only, uh, just looks like a plastic case. That's pretty crazy and pretty creepy. They could write some uh, words like, I am a tit, could be written on the front and you wouldn't know and you'd look like a plonk every time you did a video. But let's get in there, let's go and talk about the DK2 a little bit. Now the 3D is absolutely incredible, this truck looks awesome and uh, I'm sat on some kind of uh, sprongy <laughs> truck chair I'm sat in a real sort of a car seat office chair in real life uh, so that feels kind of weird because the chairs don't match up but they, they do and they don't really strange uh, being able to move around and lean around the cockpit is absolutely awesome you can go right up next to things now honestly it does feel like I'm sat in a cockpit and there's a, a light shaft coming through the top which looks a bit funky but that's really weird because it is like there's a dashboard in front of me oh head butt my steering wheel it's got something you've got to be careful of but it looks incredible see the skyline that's really cool being able to lean under because people do it when you're playing normal games you move around thinking oh, I'll be able to see around the corner of course it doesn't work in, in normal games but in this <laughs> it does that's so cool so oh one thing your truck simulator does have is when you lean up to the window it kind of automatically pushes you out of it a bit which is a little bit disorientating with the DK2 on but it's, that's cool <laughs> it's so cool let's go Euro Truck Simulator was in the Steam sales recently and uh, for those of you who don't know it's a really awesome lorry driving simulator that comes with it sort of uh, it's got its own um, it's like a campaign it's more of it's as much a, a, a management career type RPG game as it is a driving simulator first gear where am I going I've got the little GPS satellite thing is floating in front of my face which is really cool and it actually works surprisingly well and with the DK2 headset it's actually quite legible. The DK1 you couldn't see anything really, it was so low res but the resolution in this for anything that's about within 5 or 6 meters of your face is, is fine. Am I going left or right? That's <laughs> so crazy! There's a little bit of a uh, I guess part of the window blind is like poke me in the eye, that's what it feels like. Let's go left. Oh, left is right, I mean, well, left is the right way, left is not right, doesn't make any sense. Pulling out the depot. It's so strange how uh, you can actually, your movement in real life moves you in the game. It's it's just bizarre. I mean the tracking on the DK1 was really good where you could just look around. But the actual full degrees of movement, uh, it's just very strange indeed. <laughs> it's cool and it's very strange. Hold on, I'm just gonna, just gonna check to make sure it's safe. Put myself first gear. 
to use my indicator, I guess. Am I supposed to be going? I don't know. Am I supposed to be going straight on? I guess. All right. Let's go right and see what happens. Oh, it's all clear. <laughs> so cool. We have to look around for for simulators like this, where if you were playing this on a, a normal screen, you're obviously having to use your mouse to look around. Being able to look around absolutely transforms the experience just within the game itself and it's, it's the kind of thing that fully justifies an Oculus Rift. I, mean, I think you're going to get there's a lot of games that will actually be better played on a screen <laughs> and will work better not in a virtual reality setting but then games that are made specifically for the Rift and uh, simulators like this uh, I'm sure Armour once the resolution gets up and other driving simulators where you do tend to look around a lot, flight sims maybe, it's absolutely incredible. And that looks like a real truck. <laughs> Actually, that looks... If you're in a vehicle and a big truck goes past you, you get a sense of, oh, there's a big object coming next to me and it could kill me. You do get a little bit of that feeling with this on. Now, it's worth saying that... Oops. The DK2 is not perfect. Uh, it's not the most comfortable things to wear. It's rubbing on my nose a little bit, and uh, I was playing on it last night, and it did get a little bit, a little bit warm and stuffy. It was quite warm in my room for some reason. It was warm in England, uh, so it's not the most comforting of, of devices to wear. But then, then you've got to remember, it is the DK2 development kit too, and it's more for develop development than it is at sort of a finalised product for spending ages playing computer games with and in Eurotruck Simulator there does seem to be some uh, a little bit of stutter and uh, some some movement issues that that make me feel a little bit nauseous but when you're playing with the uh, with a well configured demo oh, oh I'm supposed to be on the right hand line <laughs> when you're playing with a well configured um, like the Ocul Oculus Rift configuration utility uh, or other Unity demos that are available for the DK2 already. Oh, wrong gear. They don't have this problem at all. Oh, I can use the mirror. <laughs> this is so good. Uh, just as an experience in and of itself, it's it's absolutely it's just bizarre. The the mirrors actually work like real mirrors. As I move, the uh, image in the mirror moves. Well, so that's really cool. Okay, so just popping some headphones on, I thought I'd add to the cable disaster, and it is getting into a bit of a cable disaster. I'm not sure what they're going to do with the CV1. Uh, I guess you're always going to have to have a cable coming off it. But um, I, I guess they, they can have the... Um, they'll probably have headphones built into the headset, which will mean you only have one cable, and hopefully they can have a cable that's not too thick. But really, uh, it is absolutely incredible. On the on the recording, you it won't look as. In some ways, it looks worse in the video recording than it does to actually use, and in some ways, it looks better in the 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 resolution might be slightly better in the video recording than it is on the headset. But then you're not seeing in 3D, so it's it's very hard to compare between a what you see on a 2D screen in the game or video and what you actually experience when using a virtual reality headset. They, they really are just two completely separate things. One of the things in the video recording that makes things look a lot worse is the chromatic aberration. You see all the like fringing on the edges of stuff. Uh, that's not it, that's all there in the video because that's the output. But when you're actually using the headset, that's all removed or largely removed by the Oculus Rift lenses. In fact, they actually put that in it so that you don't see it when it when the image comes through the screen through the lenses into your eyes. Oh, straight on. <laughs> There's a mini. You, you really do get... The 3D, I think, is the sort of most... Well, the whole thing, the tracking, everything is amazing. But the sense of 3D, a lot of people, I think, um, they might think, oh, you know, a headset is just 3D. And uh, I've been to the cinema and seen 3D there. And uh, it's not the same at all. The 3D in this is actually... A actually, don't know what happened there. It's actually really good 3D in that stuff is 3D as it is in the real, real world. When I look over the edge of the cabin... I'm actually 
apart from driving into the wrong lane, oh, I'm supposed to go left here, apart from like killing and blocking other road users, I actually feel like I'm the right height in the air above the road. I, I feel like I'm on some kind of crazy roller coaster now. So, so even if <laughs> you're a truck simulator, it can become an extreme roller coaster. That's absolutely ridiculous that you can do that. Just uh, really strange. Really strange. To concentrate on what I'm doing. Nice hot air balloon. I have to try and not move around too much because I can imagine watching this on a video is going to be a bit disorientating because he's going to be able to see you'll be flying all over the place. When you're wearing the headset and you move your head left and right, it's not disorientating because it feels right, it lines up right. When you move your head in real life, obviously if you're on a roundabout you'll get dizzy. But if you just turn your head like this in real life, you don't get dizzy. Your eyes track a, a single position, so even though your head's moving, it, it, it feels good and right and not confusing. If you're watching a video with someone going like that, like you're watching this, uh, you're probably going to get motion sick from it. And I have to say, the motion sickness is actually massively improved in the in the DK2 over the DK1. I'm sure a lot of it is because of the, the tracking and aspects about having less blur. But I also think, for me, a large part of it is simply having more resolution, which allows your eyes to focus on single objects better. Because in the DK1, due to the low res, I find it really hard. I'd constantly be focusing on stuff that you can't resolve properly. This still doesn't have enough resolution for stuff in the distance to be crystal clear. But as I say, everything within five or ten meters. Uh, so as it is, everything in this cockpit looks absolutely fine. Um, let's see that that bridge is slightly out of focus, and it's hard to resolve the details on it. So that. You know that can get di uncomfortable after one. I think if you're if you're playing more racing driving simulators, where if like me you tend to look quite far ahead whilst you're driving, uh, this still isn't high enough resolution to be a sort of practical sim device. But for for this Euro Truck Simulator, the DK2 is actually good enough. I'm breaking all the road rules again. Too busy lost in VR. But I think it'll be, it'll be really interesting to see what they do with the uh, CV1 if they go for... Uh, I don't think they'll go for 4K because that would be ridiculous to try and render that sort of an image. But if they up the resolution just a tiny bit... But actually, even if they did it with this resolution but just made the device as a whole more comfortable, if all they did was make it lighter smaller maybe have like a little flip joint on it so it's easier to remove without having to take the whole thing just small things which i'm sure they could do then you know you've got a device that's absolutely awesome and i could see being very popular this is called cool. the wall next to me let's drive up next to it and have a little look that's it's really strange like by looking at that, I get a sense that my cockpit actually exists over there. And if I drive too far to the left, that's going to grate along the wall. When I play this on a 2D screen, I don't get the sense of uh, envelopment or the, uh, the, the object existing, the cockpit that I'm in existing. So I don't get a sort of gut feeling of if I hit into something or it's going to collide with something. Oh, we're going left here. The lighting as well, the way the light, uh, the shadow, I've not got the graphics on the high settings on this, need to fiddle around with them a bit. But the way the light is moving around the cockpit is really <laughs> convincing. Obviously that's just part of the game, but... Oh, drifting that. Driving on the limit, I don't know what we're delivering, but we've got to get it there on time, so we have to take, we have to drift a little bit. Stir things up. 60 mile an hour speed limit, we're not going at that speed. Something you do notice with the uh, DK2 over the DK1 is that it's it's far more sensitive to having the correct position on your head. Uh, you really do need to make sure your eyes are, are centred. Otherwise, uh, stuff starts getting out of focus and at the edges things are a little bit out of focus. 
when you've got it in the sweet spot, it's uh, it's really good. And a lot of people were actually complaining about the uh, the FOV in the in the DK2 over DK1. Uh, I don't think it is, is slightly smaller, but I don't think it's that bad. I think the key thing to do is to if you it's got dials on the side that you can. Oh, I've discovered someone's got dials on the side that you can move the screen out a bit, which a lot of people use if they're wearing glasses with it. And as as long as you don't see the flat part of the screen, then you're fine. As soon as you if you can see the edge of the screen, then it really breaks the immersion immediately. We've got food to deliver. We can't afford to slow down for speed cameras. So I, I was really worried online. Oh dear, we're going to kill someone. Take this go around here. It's all right. No one caught us. Totally legal. <laughs> I'm indicating now. It's all fine. Yeah, I was reading on the on the website. A lot a lot of people going crazy about the FOV being smaller. I think probably because they've just seen the Tuscany demo. And uh, I guess if you directly compared them, but as long as you set it up just right, it's, it, I don't think it is a problem to be honest. It's not the be all and end all, really. Am I meant to be going in there? I think I've just driven past where I'm supposed to go. Let's go around the roundabout. Totally lost. Oh no! Oh, look at that lorry with cars on it. That's incredible. Okay, we're going into the uh, depot there. I think that's right. It's so cool being able to look around. It, it really is just amazing. Don't know what else you could say, really. I'm going to reverse park this really badly. Okay, we've arrived. Game gives you a choice to uh, cop out and... Uh, not do reverse parking. <laughs> oh no, this is going to be a disaster. Oh no! Come on! Oh my, it literally feels like I'm reversing the bloody lorry. Oh! Oh no! That's not how you reverse a lorry. Oh no! Need to go back to lorry school. Do you know what? I wonder if this is actually would be a valid way for a real lorry driver or real anyone to learn how to reverse a caravan or anything like that. No! This way. There we go. Oh god, cannot see anything. Maybe I should just use the mirrors more. No. Oh that's not even my hole. Okay, this is probably not how you're supposed to do it. No, wrong way. Ah. Oh, come on, that is so good. Oh. Oh, look at the angle on that. Oh, oh come on. Oh my god, that is so good. That will do. It's completely off. I'm surprised that... That's actually really weird. I don't feel particularly uh, motion sick from leaning out of a car... Well, what feels like leaning out of a lorry window. Uh, the blood was rushing to my head a bit because I was upside down, but... Absolutely amazing. <laughs> Who knew that a lorry simulator could be so fun? And, you know what? When you go... When you stick your head out the window... Oh, what my headbutt in? <laughs> but my tripod or something. That was weird. When you put your head out the window, the sound changes from inside to outside, which is really bizarre. Well, there you go. That's that's a quick preview of Euro Truck Simulator and the DK2. Um, really incredible. I need to spend some more time with it, but uh, massive, massive improvement over the DK1 resolution, especially. Uh, I'm really excited to try this out with more stuff. Thanks for watching this. Look forward to some more. DK2 videos and uh, click the buttons below and subscribe if you enjoyed it. Goodbye.